Welcome everybody. This is the fun video. Um, we're going to start doing some extracting some tools from some songs. So the first song that we're going to do is uh, Shotgun by George Ezra. It's a beginner song that I've been adding in the guitar courses and everything like that, singing, playing. It's a really, really simple song. So if you've been watching those courses, it'll be a fun little like, you know, theme for all the beginner foundation stuff that we can go through. So this first arena of song analysis i'm going to try and keep it as simple as possible because i don't want to be going too hardcore when it comes to analysis because as soon as especially when i was doing this i was like oh my god look at this melody or oh, look at this and i was like calm it down Lauren. like pull it back because we want to get like just beginners into it um obviously if you are if you find that the analysis that we do is not enough just do more like you can start to look in more and now that you've already ha established some a foundation of analysis then you can see the areas that you can like dive a bit further deeper into um so when we go into a song and we go to analyze analyze it analysis is it <laughs> analyze it what we're going to do is we're going to look at the prosody element first like what is the song about um because we want to understand that like what what is the objective of all these elements and are they serving the objective of the song? Some hit songs, you're going to be like, no, they don't. But they have another, they'll, they might have a part of their song that is like so good, like insanely good. And I might get roasted for this, but obviously Benson Boone's uh, Beautiful Things uh, is like a epic song at the moment. And like, that whole first part of the song, I just do not vibe with. I don't feel like it is a hit song. And it, and it's like, but that chorus, oh my God. Like, like I know he's doing like a, like a queen thing. Like he's, he's got like this thematic approach to a song and it's very, very clever and cool. Um, but I, when I'm looking at it, I'm like, what makes the song like the hit? And it's that chorus is just so epic. And obviously he built it off of social and it's so, so clever. I can't, I can't wait to the day till I see that a number one song. Every time I look at Billboard, I'm like, is this song going to become a number one? And then um, and then I, I was so excited and then Taylor Swift dropped a new album and then she just ruined it for him. He would have been number one this week. He would have been number one this week if you looked at the Billboard hits because Taylor Swift has all the top 15, top 14 hits out on the Billboard and he's number 15. So he would have been number one if Taylor Swift didn't release her album. Kudos to him. He's doing the big grind. Anyway, back to um, shotgun. But like, so that's what I mean. We want to take out the things that we know are working um, and don't worry about the things that aren't working uh, because like you're going to find that no song is perfect. You know, um, even some of the, the songs that you like, are like, oh my God, this is a, one of the best songs in the world. I was like, eh, but, it, but there are elements to it that are, that are wrong, you know? Um, they, there are times that people are going to misstress things, but we want to focus on the good elements, take those tools and apply it because we are nowhere near, um, majority of, I mean, if you're a pro writer and watching this, just like turn it off and keep doing your thing because this is for people who want to learn, um, that aren't already there yet. So we are going to go right into the title of the song and then reverse engineer what it is. And then we will go into all the elements. So the song is called shotgun, um, the main chorus line is like, I'll be riding shotgun underneath the hot sun, feeling like someone. Um, like, basically, my understanding that I that I drew from that is just like living care carefree. He's riding shotgun. He's not driving the car, so he, he doesn't have control. He's just having a good time underneath the hot sun, being awesome and feeling like someone. Um, it's like he's like the man, right? He's just like, I'm I'm just the, the man, you know, living a good time. Uh, and so... If we were to reverse engineer what we want out of that, we want a melody that's very fun, um, that's dynamic, that's boppy, that's moving around, um, but it's also very safe. Uh, we want a harmony that's safe. We want a harmony that that's not doing anything crazy. We don't want like fancy chords going crazy everywhere and all these reharms and a lot of changes. We don't want a lot of change because there's not a lot of change. Aside from the start of the song where he goes from being in a bad place to the good place by the time he gets to the chorus, you know, we don't want to be doing crazy things. Um, and so, and then obviously the lyrics will serve uh, like directly to give us the meaning. So these are the elements that we're thinking of prosody. So we want it to feel carefree, want it, want it to feel fun. Now, 
if we go into the harmony right off the bat, so if you've checked out our music theory course, uh, you'll understand what I'm about to say. It is a one, four, six minor five progression. So it's just one, four, six, five. That's how he's playing it. He's playing in the key of F. So that's a very simple. Now we are going to, if you want to play this in different keys, so the original key is F. So the key is F. So you can use a capo and do fancy stuff if you want to, but say you want to extract that chord progression immediately in your playing. So this is the first tool that we're going to steal. The one, four, six, five progression is a banger progression. So cool, like very, very cool. Now the chord movement goes from stable, unstable, stable again, and then very unstable. Then it needs to be resolved. So it has like safe, tension, safe again, lots of tension, because that wants to resolve that five one. Um, that's because the one and the six are very safe chords. The four is a little bit of tension and that five is like a big, that's gonna really pull people in. Now, that's a really banger chord progression. Um, you hear it in heaps and heaps of songs, you know, waiting on the world to change, blah, blah, blah. People get ready. Uh, like, oh no, that's a one six. But anyway, um, there's a couple, like it's you hear it all the time. You're gonna hear this progression all the time. It'll be something that in the next few tools, we're gonna be like, hey, it's a one, four, six, five progression. There you go. You got another one. Another one. DJ Khaled. Now, um, this progression, very simple, very chill, very easy. Um, it's not doing anything crazy and it and it serves and it just loops. You can loop this thing forever and like as long as you're clever in the lyric and the melody, you don't need to change anything. Now, if we go to shotgun, you know, the 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 key concept of the song go to prosody do we think that this harmony serves it i believe it does it's a very very simple progression he's not doing anything crazy we can anticipate it harmonically it just feels good and even when he starts the song and he's being like he's like i'm in you know homegrown alligator see you later he's like i'm done with this not fun place i'm in and i want to go to a better place he's already given you that um these chord, this chord progression is already implying like that there's something that's going to happen and it's happy and it's moving forward um, and it just keeps rolling, you know, and there's no like surprises or anything like that. It's just like, no, nah, once we're here, we're good. And um, I think that's a really, really beautiful thing when it comes to this kind of uh, chord progression. So they don't change anything. It's just very simple. Um, the harmony just stays that way. Easy song. So if you are wanting to take this out immediately, if you're a beginner, um, mm -hmm. I'm going to give you the two shapes that we really approach uh, with. So all beginner guitarists, if you haven't done this yet, you can definitely go through our beginner course and you'll have it immediately. Um, but the first, I, I call it like the G key. So we're going to be using G as our anchor chord. So this is our one. And then our four chord is a C. And then our six minor chord is an E minor. And then our five chord is a D. Navigator, see you later. Gotta hit the road. Gotta hit the road. Now we and like you can just grab your capo, depending on what. So say if you're gonna write your own song, you can move this anywhere on the fretboard. So you can just put it on third fret. You know you can do whatever you want with that. Now. Um, the C shape is the next one. So if, say you want to anchor it around the fifth string, so you want to get the C shape, this is the next best one that I reckon is very easy to do. Um, the one chord will now be a C. The four chord will now be an F. And then the uh, six minor chord is an A minor. And the five chord's a G. Home, homegrown alligator, see you later. Gotta hit the road. Gotta hit the road me transposing the melody <laughs> so you can move that every way you want say we put it on the fifth fret you know you got it here this is the actual original key so if i put it on the fifth fret and i play it with the c shape this is the original key uh sorry so that's all we're going to do for the harmony. 
extract that bad boy, easy peasy. Now, let's say we're going to move on to other stuff. Uh, so once we take, I think that's enough of the harmony. You can have heaps of fun with that. That's going to going to be really, really fun for you. So by the way, at the end of this, um, I want you guys to write a song. So this is the fun. This is the cool thing that we're going to do here. Now, um, let's move to the melody. Melody has three distinct melodies. Uh, I mean, if we count the bridge, it's four. Um, but the, the bridge is not something I really want you guys to care about. If you want to add a bridge, you can add a bridge um, in your songs. But the really cool thing here is the melody in the verse, pre-chorus, and the chorus. Because they're very, very well written. Um, now, when I talk about melody, I'm not going to go into like notes of the melody. You can just like kind of follow a melodic contour of the of the notes. You can go into that. I don't I don't want to go too hardcore into it because um, the the melodic notes are very important, hundred percent. But what is amazing about this is the vocal rhythm of what he's coming up with. So, if we go into the verse, it goes. Homegrown alligator, see you later. Got to hit the road. Got to hit the road. So that homegrown alligator. So he's got this bam bam da 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 da, which is so cool. So he's just doing like this really cool strong pulse. He's he's implying this bam bam da 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 da. So that's a very very cool vocal rhythm that he's got going in the, in what they've written. So it's this melodic rhythm that they have is really bomb, bomb, da, 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 really cool. So that, that's like safe, safe tension. Now in this song, he's opening straight away. Say he's playing the, the F chord. Sorry, one second. I'm just getting random text messages. Um, so we get that, that F chord. Uh, so it'd be like, bomb, bomb, ba, da, 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 da. So connecting that vocal rhythm with that chord progression, on the safest chord, he's got this really strong bam bam, bam bam, da 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 da. da. So and that's when he's doing the change in the rhythm. He's got on the the little bit of tension chord, and then got to hit the road. So that's the safe. That's the second safest chord that he's gonna have there, uh, and that's where he has the cleanest melody there as well. There's not no, no busyness happening. Got to hit the road, got to hit the road. So very cool uh, vocal rhythm, very, very uh, clever. Uh, now, the reason why it's super clever is how you're going to see how he connects these, the next two rhythms to what he just initiated. So first one is two strong pulses at the beginning and then a little bit of busy. Now, the pre-chorus is... Uh, is three pulses then busy, which is really cool. Time flies by in the yellow and green. Stick around and you'll see what I mean. Now there's a mountain top that I'm dreaming of. If you need me, you know where I'll be. So he's got this like three pulses that come out that are really cool because time flies by. It, immediately when you hear that, that vocal rhythm that he's got there completely throws you off. Like it is, it is, you are hearing homegrown alligator, but time flies by in the yellow. So it's like bam, 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 na, 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 na. So I think that that's a, a very clever way that he's not changing anything in the harmony, but he uses that pre chorus vocal rhythm to give you enough tension to like sneak you away. And he wants you to feel that three pulse because he's going to come back in in the chorus with a two pulse. So he wants that that three ba 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 da 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 two three. Now there's a mountain top that I'm dreaming of. If you need me, you know where I'll be. And um, that's going to be really really cool. So we got um, homegrown, and that's a really great start. Typically, in your verses, um, it, or just in general, in the in the rhythms, if you're not confident in being clever with how you're writing your rhythms, you can go um, just focus on the start of each rhythm, like a start of each vocal line that you're trying to write. The melody is going to be really handy because it gets super frustrating if you're like, "I got to get every single thing right." Don't if you're a beginner, you don't need to do that. Like you're just starting. Um, and if you're more experienced and you're someone who gets caught up in like, I need every single thing, it's like, 
you don't need to get every single thing right. Like it could be a lot of the stuff is quite redundant of what he's doing. But those things, those are the spotlight moments where he's spotlighting a lyric or he's spotlighting a vocal melody. Um, and that's really, really like if you, you need to have those, like as long as you have those, everything else can kind of be like YOLO. You can make mistakes there and you will get better over time at like nailing that part. So homegrown. And then he goes, time flies by. That's a pre-chorus. Now this is the magic of it. He's about to come back in and he's going to hit you with a two pulse, which he did in the verse. But the way he sets it up is very, very clever. He's like... I'll be riding shotgun underneath the hot sun, feeling like a someone. Oh, there's a reason why songs are so good. Now, I fucking love when I see something like this. So I know it's like a beginner song and whatever, but there's a reason why I can pick this song up and I can give it to... Uh, anyone and they can play it like because it's so easy it's so clean there's no fanciness he's not doing anything crazy it's four short rhythms two strong hits four short rhythms two strong hits so i'll be riding shotgun ba da 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 ba ba da 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 ba ba da 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 ba ba and then he fills it with whatever production he has there but that is like Mm, if you can write a melody that good, ah, oh, and it, it brings you back to the verse as well because it goes homegrown. So it's exact same in in the exact same place where you would hear that the beginning pulse, homegrown alligator. I'll be riding shotgun. It's exactly the same, but the setup for that two pulse is different, and it's also coming. It's coming out of that three pulse that we had in the pre-chorus. So. The melody is really, really clever. And, and, you, and you know from my singing and playing guitar courses and stuff, when I talk about when you go to learn a song, the vocal rhythm is like so king. It's just so... Mm, it's like the thing that really... It's what's going to connect people to your song. It's what's going to... It truly is the most memorable element. You know, the note of like... And I... I that's... Like that's everyone sings the note wrong. <laughs> I'm probably saying it wrong, but it's it's when that moment happens. Dun, 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 love you. It's just like such a huge rhythm that just like if you sustain that note over that rhythm, it just like whoa. Obviously, the note when you when you hear these people sing it, it's incredible, but. Um, like the rhythm is, is really like the magic when you pull out these really clever rhythms and you understand how to set up on a really good note with a great rhythm. Oh, that you are fast tracking your listenability, like a million miles an hour is so, so, so important. So anyway, that's what this melody is doing from my opinion, um, that I think of the true, like things that we really need to talk about. Cause I've been talking a bit in this this video but that's where the melody's happening and 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 it is just such a killer melody i'll be riding shotgun underneath the da da ba da 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 ba 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 da 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 ba you just that's that's clean that's so clean and if you're into um like playing guitar or doing anything like that uh you know you could add that as lick so as You know, you could you could steal that vocal rhythm in uh in your guitar solos. Pro tip: best way to come up with really cool guitar lines: steal vocal rhythms that are successful. Um, anyway, uh, that's kind of what I want to talk about with this one. Uh, with that with that melody. Uh, now I'm gonna go to the lyric part. Um, because I talked talked a lot about the melody, but I truly believe that the melody is really like this is the thing that just like, hmm. It, for me, in this song, the melody is like, that's the big win. That's totally the biggest win in the song. Um, just so so easy to replicate, so easy to sing. Uh, so you can see what they did there. Two strong pulses, three strong pulses in the pre-chorus, and then the four short rhythms, and then the two big pulses to really bring out the chorus. So it's very, very clever. And those four short, where they place those four short rhythms, 
were pickups. So I'll be riding shotgun underneath the hot sun. So they're picking up into each chord change. So they're picking up. I'll be riding shotgun underneath the hot sun, feeling like a someone. Like really, really good. So those, so the the two pulses are landing directly on the chord change, and the pickups are happening right before the chord change. And so that creates like this that the tension in the short rhythms is is building into the chord change and then you get that resolution on the chord change which is fantastic so that's prosody that's them connecting the vocal rhythm exactly where they need to place it in the chord change and it's just so it anyone can can connect with it there's no fancy stuff going everywhere there's no vocal rhythm that's like off off seat offset he's not creating tension he's not trying to throw you off um, he wants you to feel like you're riding shotgun in a car, hot sun, and you are the man. Uh, you, you're someone. You're living the best life. You're down in Australia living the best life or on the beach in Bondi, killing it. Uh, so, like, that's what he wants you to feel, and that's what that vocal rhythm is doing. Um, now, if we go to the lyrics, uh, straight away, homegrown alligator. Um Homegrown and then alligator are immediately going to give you an imagery of a swamp. Uh, it's my swamp. Um, or it's going to give you maybe like some Florida vibes if you're from Florida. But if I think of alligators, I think of like swamps, um, the bayou or whatever. And and because it's homegrown, it's got a bit of like a like a like a like a swampy vibe to it. Um, so and then immediately he's swapping you to the beach. He's like immediately swapping like we're in the sun. It's the beach. You know, architectures change south of the equator, all these different like lines that he has in there. Um, the imagery is immediately like he starts you off giving you like tension of like homegrown alligator. See you later. So immediately in the lyric, he's just like, fuck off. You're gone. And then he comes bracket straight in and he's giving you like this whole epic vibe of like, we're at the beach. We're living up bikini bottoms, lager tops. I could get used to this. All these kind of, ah, oh, just such, such great lyrics. Um, str- such great imagery. He's not trying to be like, you know, sun was blaring and glistening water. And he, no, he's just like, no, he's super simple. He's like, homegrown alligator, see you later. Gone, done. And uh, and also a very fun play on um, see you later alligator. Really, really clever, <laughs> you know, uh, which is a, what is the thing? A cliche. So cliches are great. Um, this is an exceptional execution of a cliche where he has given you the cliche and then he has flipped it slightly and it's enough. You know, he doesn't want to be like, you know, homegrown, see you later, alligator. Like, no, he's not doing it. He's like, homegrown alligator, see you later. It's it's very cool. Um, cool way to, to integrate that cliche. Now, the next important thing in this verse, he has got to hit the road, got to hit the road. So got to hit the road, got to hit the road in this line is really important because it feels it has a sense of urgency towards I need to leave, which is really cool. So he's leaving towards the dream scenario that he's going after. Something changed in the atmosphere, architecture, unfamiliar. I could get used to this. So there's two lines, get the, got to hit the road and I could get used to this. This is really important. In verse one, they have a certain attribute. Got to hit the road is escapism and then i could get used to this is like hope now now he goes time flies by in the yellow and green stick around if you see what i mean there's a mountain top that i'm dreaming of if you need me you know where i'll be now just that's such a great so great in as a pre-chorus that he's got there with the lyrics um stick around and you see what i'll mean is a really great pull in to the, he's not doing anything fancy there's no like you know, stick around because you'll like like it. He, he, there's no similes, very little metaphor. Um, it's just great. Very, very clean, clean writing, really clean lyric writing. But the stick around and you see what I mean. Time flies by in the yellow and green. Stick around and you'll see what I mean. Stick around is really great to like as just like a really cool uh, lyric cue to keep people in, engaged in the in in just in what you're you're singing it's just like if someone's singing and like immediately telling you stick around it's going to help in retention so it's very very cool very clever um 
Now he goes, I'll be riding shotgun. So that he just that that pre chorus is not much extra we need to talk about, but that's great. Very, very great written. Now I'll be riding shotgun underneath the hot sun, feeling like a someone. Fantastic. He's he's literally saying, I'll be riding shotgun, so that means he's not driving the car and he's and he's important because he's at the front. That's what a shotgun rider is. Um and then uh, underneath the hot sun, really nice. That means it's summer, good times, living the best life. And then feeling uh, like someone, obviously, he's created a sense of importance in the character that he's portraying, which is fantastic. That's, you don't need to do much more than that. That's, uh, that's clean. We are clean when it comes to lyric writing. So if his goal was to create a carefree vibe, fantastic. Now, in one verse, one pre-chorus, one chorus, he has completely changed the first line of swampy to beach vibe, very good times, happy things. Now you're like, well, then how do I write the second verse? Now he comes in with the second verse. We're south of the equator, navigator, got to hit the road, got to hit the road. Now got to hit the road because we're now already in the place of fun has another, has a fresh new color. So we have a repetition of the same lyric, but it has a new color because of where it's it's just come after the chorus, which is fantastic. Deep sea diving around the clock, bikini bottoms, lager tops. I could get used to this. Has a very different vibe of like, it's not now hopeful. It's just like, I dig. Like, this is this is my vibe. There's no hope. He already knows it's great. In the first verse, it was like, there was a hopeful element to it. There was a, a sense of escape. Um, now he's saying the exact same lyrics, but they've been recolored to be got to hit the road, got to hit the road is like, let's go. I'm having so much fun here. Let's get it. Let's get it. And then I could get used to this is like, I could get used to this forever, which is cool. It's a totally different vibe to being like, I mean, I could get used to this. It's pretty cool. Um, but now this is like, I could get used to this, which is a very, very cool way to, to reintegrate it. And then he doesn't have to change much of the lyrics, right? So if we look at what he's done from the very first verse to the second verse, he hasn't changed any lyrics. We're done. Bam. He's only changed two lines. And then he comes back. Time flies by in the yellow and green. So he's just reiterating, which is good. Repetition and re, like reinforcing a simple thing is great. He doesn't want to be crazy. He doesn't want to be changing pre-chorus lyrics and all that stuff. This is meant to be simple. Then he goes, I'll be riding shotgun. Same thing as normal. Easy peasy. Uh, very simple. Now, the only change that he's going to make here is he's going to have a bridge and he goes, we got two in the front, two in the back, sailing along, and we don't look back. All that he's doing in his bridge, so normally the bridge is kind of like this thing that ta like takes you to another place. Um, like, this is a really clean bridge. There's nothing fancy happening here. All it's doing is like giving us another lyrical like prettiness. Um, he's introduced like at the beginning, he's not talking about, uh, any, any beach stuff yet. Like he hasn't, he hasn't given straight out like water things, but until he has bikini bottoms here, deep sea diving round the clock, bikini bottoms, which was in the second verse was when he introduced water. Um, and then that's where he brings in that bridge that sailing along is a, is a really great, um, like re reaffirmation or like an extension of it because now it's not like they're riding shotgun in a car now they're sailing you know um which is really cool um but whether he's using sailing as a metaphor like i'm driving and sailing along or he's li literally sailing who cares um it just it's a nice cool it's a nice cool image to add in a bridge which is slightly different to what you were expecting or already and then that brings in a different color to i'll be riding shotgun uh, time flies by in the yellow and green stick around you see what i mean just fantastic lyric writing absolutely fantastic so that is my analysis of shotgun um you know those verse taglines got to hit the road i could get used to it um they're really really brilliant so as you can see in that analyzing those two lines very 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 well executed changes between got to hit the road and I could get used to this very, very clever use of verse one and verse two. He's using the, they're using whatever they've done in the first part of the song and then they're recoloring it in the second part of the song. 
Absolutely fantastic writing. Now, this is why songs are hits. These guys, um, these three dudes, I believe it's du- three dudes here, Frederick, John Philip Gibson, George Ezra, and Joel Pot. They don't mess around. They're very good at what they do. So that's why you want to analyze these songs because you might sit down and um, especially I remember me, I used to be a bit of a snob and be like, oh, no, it's not John Mayer. It's, it's not the vibe, you know. It was just all like when I used to, oh, my God, I, I used to be like, oh, pop songs are for idiots. Like Steve Vai is the best. Like, you know, <laughs> well, Van Halen is like, no, uh, these guys are absolutely exceptional at their craft and um, they know what they're doing and you can learn a lot from them. So hopefully this video gave you a, a really great context on how we can approach stealing uh, their, their tricks and see if like some of them might apply to your writing. Now, we just did this analysis. It's 30 minutes. Oh my God, I'm looking at I mean, I talked for 30 minutes. I'm so sorry for you guys. But hopefully it was a fun little lecture or a lesson. But what you want to do now, the step after this is write the song. Take something out. I don't care if you just take one thing. If you just take the chord progression and then write a song, wicked. You just you you want to ex- extract the information that you're doing and try to apply it to some form of inspiration. Even if you write like, you know, my dog is super sad. No, my dog is happy. And it's running around, chasing birds, having good times. And it will, and it goes, and it rides away. And I, I don't know what's going on, what's going on, what's going on. I don't know what's going on, but it's a very, very cute dog. And my dog has a really good time hanging. I, I don't even know what I'm doing, but you can see how I just like took the chords and then I just did something. But like it can be as stupid as that. Just take the knowledge that you've you've gained and then apply it somehow and have have fun. Like there is no, there's no rules here. Um, the only thing that I, I encourage you to do, you will only get good at writing songs by writing songs. Taking this information that I, I can't force you to write a song. Um, but what I can do through these courses is give you tools. And there we go. George Ezra, Shotgun. Like, it's a really awesome, like, I jumped into this video and I was like, oh, it's only going to be like 10 minutes. It's pretty simple. I was like, the more I got into the analysis, I was like, oh my God, this is just so fun. The more I started talking about it, I'm like, oh my God, this is why I've been looking forward to this course. Anyway, um, I'm going to, I'm going to be late for my stream if I don't finish now, but uh, this is the video. Have fun, get the song, listen to the song, listen to, and listen through this analysis. Uh, Like go back to listen to the song. uh, And then all you're going to do is see if you can write another version of the song swap the melody around swap the vocal rhythm around just take the concepts that he does like instead of like i mean be like invert it right so be like okay well actually if he does it all like this and it's all happy you know you could just be like okay what if i flip everything around and i do like you know the four chord first and then i go four uh i go four six five one and then i like you know have my my strong pulses on the on the off beat or the like second beat you know like just you can literally just take a great thing and then just Frankenstein it and then find your own approach to it and be clever. Anyway, have fun with this video. Have fun with it. I can't wait to see you guys post videos of you guys writing your own songs and doing all that kind of stuff. But um, yeah, give me feedback if this was useful to you and uh, let's jump into more of these case studies in the future. So songwriting 101, let's get it rocking and rolling. All right, see you guys soon.